Hi, my name is Stephen Gabori, and I'm with Ballets with a Twist. We're here in New York City. Uh, we're a, roughly a 14-member dance uh, ballet company. And uh, since 2009, we've been uh, touring uh, the United States with a sh our signature production, which is entitled Cocktail Hour, The Show. So these are all uh, individual cocktail vignettes, uh, vignettes with uh, a la the Martini, the Mai Tai, the Bloody Mary. And uh, it's an exciting project for me. I'm um, composing the music for it. I'm the arranger, I'm the musical director, I'm also the associate uh, director. But it's a marvelous opportunity for me in terms of that I just can write whatever the appropriate music is for that cocktail. It's not all in one genre. The, the music can go from classical to jazz to pop to rock to R&B to bluegrass and so it it's it's a lot of fun and um, in terms of it, it's a lot of fun for us also in terms of we have now have grown to 30 cocktails that we have over 30 cocktails so in a, a given evening's performance of like you know an hour and a half two hour show uh, we'll show maybe 12, 13 cocktails, but, but now we have so many, we can cater it to the audience, if it's a younger, older audience, classic audience, more of a ballet audience, big stage, small stage, nightclub. So um, it's, and it keeps it um, fresh for the dancers, because uh, we're always changing it up. I had been uh, working with the choreographer, um, Marilyn Claus, and the, uh, she's the director, over the years. And uh, we had done a few, of, a few of the first cocktails in the mid-90s um, for as individual pieces in a performance. But it was really around 2009 when she decided to uh, put them all together, put together a show. And uh, we also aligned with our costume director, whose name is, is Catherine Zare. And so it's kind of been the three of us since then, kind of cranking them out. I grew up in Berkeley, California, and studied composition at San Francisco State University. And following that, I'd, I'd been playing in bands, everything from uh, uh, Country Joe and the Fish out there from Woodstock fame um, to some uh, local jazz artists. But in 1975, I put together, uh, put together a, a kind of a fusion vocal group called Night Flight, and we were managed by Bill Graham. And we used to play um, original music around the Bay Area like five nights a week, which is pretty amazing. And our drummer decided to get married in uh, 1977 in New York, so we all decided, well, we were going to go to the wedding, and uh, and it turned into a migration for us from the Bay Area, and we, we stayed in New York since then. I was musical director with Angela Bofill, um, uh, who was on GRP Records uh, years ago, and uh, got interested in recording. I, had, I started um, my recording studio in the mid-'80s uh, in the East Village, and, but it was continued touring. I uh, toured with um, opera singer Peter Hoffman, who had a, a also a pop career in, in uh, G Germany and Europe. And that led to uh, me being um, also musical director with Uta Lemper, the uh, German songstress, Chanteuse, and then, actually. Um, and continue, continue working with different bands, um, a Scottish band called the Blue Nile, also Suzanne Vega, um, uh, recorded with Sean Colvin, a lot, a lot of different, um, uh, Dar Williams, a lot of different singer-songwriters kind of, um, 
sort of became my niche. And then uh, in 2001, um, I live on Chamber Street, and uh, uh, when the um, World Trade Center was bombed, um, right on our side of, of Chamber Street, it was closed off and quarantined um, as it was a uh, crime zone that they were going to investigate. So I was first told that we couldn't get back into, I couldn't get back into my studio or my home. I lived there as well. And so uh, I was starting to look at <laughs> literally joining the circus and going out on the road with Cirque du Soleil. And uh, I remember uh, we were staying up in Soho. The Soho Grand had um, really reasonable rooms for like us refugees out of there. And I was watching this tribute to John Lennon that was at Radio City. And um, all of a sudden in the middle of the show, they said, now we're going to cut away to a little remote uh, part of Central Park. And it was Cindy Lauper performing Strawberry Fields Forever in Strawberry Fields with just an intimate crowd and Ruichi Sakamoto was playing and it was a violin and cello and just a little intimate crowd of 150 people and it was just beautiful and I remember saying to my wife at that point she's the she's the one who really gets John's spirit here and lo and behold um, you know uh, so there I am you know ready to join the circus and wondering what you know what I'm going to do and how I'm going to make a living as my studio is closed and I get a call uh, about three weeks later from um, Cindy's people that they want me to join her band. So that was the end of 2001. So I was with uh, Cindy all up to the beginning of 2015. And, um, but meanwhile, Cocktail Hour here, it started in 2009. And, and really in 2015, I, I uh, went and told Cindy, you know, I just can't do both of these anymore. And actually with her blessing, um, She's, she understood, and, and actually, our our company, Valley of the Twist, has opened her home for the holiday show. Uh, I think four out of the seven shows we open the evening. One night we did a uh, uh, we did our Brandy Alexander, and so I had scored that for a marching band. So we had the Rawway High School marching band come from the back of the theater down the aisles and start the show, and we did the piece. And Cindy loved that, so it was, it was a lot of fun.